you may not have realized it yet, but this is what your life is all about. No, really. This is what your life is all about. It's about fruit. Now, this tomato didn't just suddenly appear out of my Bible. Poof! It's a gift of the Spirit. No, seriously. It didn't just suddenly come into existence and I said, in the name of Jesus, a tomato will appear. No, it didn't happen that way. I didn't one day say, oh, ah, God, come into my life. Oh, look what happened. God came into my life. I have a tomato. No, that's not how it happened. What happened with this tomato is that I actually had a plant, a tomato plant, oh, about this big. And I knew that that tomato plant had been started from seeds and had grown and been specially developed in order to make tomatoes. And this is called a, I think it's a beefy tomato, I'm not sure. I have some that are huge, but they're still green. But the tomato that you see in front of you came from a tomato plant. It is obviously a tomato. When I look at it, I see that it's got a stem. I watched it grow. I could tell that it was from a tomato plant because the plant was a tomato plant and there were other tomatoes. So I knew that it being on the vine, so to speak, or a branch of, see there's a little vine kind of thing that branch comes up and then gets a little kind of like vine thingy, the tomatoes clump around it. Well, I knew this tomato came from a tomato plant. It didn't come from an apple tree. It didn't come from a pear tree. It didn't come from a peach tree. Although that would have been interesting. As a matter of fact, it came from a tomato plant. And, you know, I think of plantings of the Lord a lot like I think of churches. You know, churches produce a certain amount of people. They are there specifically designed in order to cause people to be disciples, to follow Jesus, to learn and study and be equipped for the ministry as well as to encourage one another. They're not just there to worship. You know, quite frankly, that's not what churches are designed for. Churches are designed to teach you, prepare you, and send you out so that you would go out and bear fruit. Oh, that's what a church is for? Well, yeah. So you see, if you don't go to church, it's kind of hard to really bear fruit. Now, it can be done because there are wild bushes out in the woods, you know, that sometimes, you know, like mushrooms, you know, and other things, you know, they, they, they do grow some kind of fruit, you know, and it just might work for you, but I doubt it. But you see, when you have, as I did, a cultivated garden, as I have, when you go out of your way to produce fruit that you want to eat and taste and smell, then you will go to that plant and expect to see fruit. Jesus did that with the olive tree. He came to an olive tree one time and he, he had his disciples with him and they were watching him, you know, and they were always watching him see what he was going to do, you know, because you never knew quite what Jesus was going to do and you sure didn't know what he was going to say because, man, every time that you thought you knew what Jesus was going to say, he'd say something else. That's kind of weird. <laughs> what do you mean by that, Lord? And they had to ask him all the time, well, what do you mean? Well, he went up to this fig tree, you know, and he said, Looked for some things, and he didn't see, and he cursed it, bam, wiped it out. He was like, whoa, it died that fast, because it bore no fruit. Now, there's another fig tree, some other time, that he went up to, and they're ready for him. You know, they're going, wow, watch this, the Lord's going to curse it. And he says, hey, dig a trench around it. You know, put some water in that trench, and then put some fertilizer inside the trench. Well, I thought he was going to curse it. No, he grew it. There are times and places for all of us in our life that God grows us up, develops us, and expects us to bear fruit. Sometimes we need a little more fertilizer. Sometimes we need a little more watering. Sometimes we need to be trained up in the way of the Lord 
that we might grow therein and become ministers of God. That we might become kings and priests. That we might be the disciples of Jesus we were meant to be. But if we don't follow his way and we don't do his will, then how are we going to become like Jesus? How are we going to bear fruit? How are we going to be like peachy keen? Or in this case, tomato wheat. Now you see, I've already eaten my cherry tomatoes, and I've already eaten one of these beefy tomatoes. And ooh wee! There's just something about homegrown, and I don't mean that smoking stuff. I mean that eating stuff. Because you see, sometimes your life may go up in smoke, and if you're smoking your life away, you know, toking it in some way, then guess what? Your life is going up in smoke. But you see, if your life is bearing fruit, then the Lord will come to you and he'll expect to see in you fruit. Because this is what life is all about. This is what God wants you to do right now, this time, this place in the world. He wants you to bear fruit and to bear much fruit. So he's going to prune you at times. He's going to cut kind of like the branches off that aren't bearing fruit. He's going to like maybe dig holes around, you know, your life, you know, and separate you from the world, you know, because he wants you to bear fruit. He's going to fertilize you sometimes, but also sometimes he's going to come expecting something's done. He's going to say, hey, are you bearing fruit? Well, what's a fruit? Well, it's called fruits of the spirit, you know, and that's his spirit, the spirit of God. You see, we can't bear fruit of ourselves by ourselves. We just can't do it. We try, but guess what? Anytime you see somebody that's outside the church, do they look like they're very peaceful? No. When you see somebody that's complaining about religion or complaining about Christianity, do you see them as very happy? No. When you see somebody that's, you know, like, really, you know, kind of like talking bad and dirty and nasty about other Christians, you know, and knocking what they're doing, do you think that they're very joyful? No. In other words, do you think the Spirit of God is bearing fruit in their life? No. As a matter of fact, I think they're throwing tomatoes, aren't they? They don't know what to do with fruit. You see, they, they don't take it. Oh. And they don't like, ooh, give thanks to God for it, for bearing fruit, because it's coming from your life. You know, it's something that that's been in your soul, you know, and that God has taken a part of your experiences and applied it to the circumstances of your life and it's borne fruit and suddenly you go offer it up to God and God can use your life to minister to someone else and they can taste your life and see that it's good because it's homegrown. It's fruitful. It wasn't picked too early like in the grocery stores when they pick them when they're green, you know, and they don't really develop fully sweet, you know, they kind of taste kind of like a tomato. But these, oh man, when you grow yourself, oh boy, do they taste good. <laughs> man, this ain't going to last long. <laughs> Trust me, I'm going to eat it. And God feels the same way about you. He wants you to bear fruit. He wants you to be homegrown. He wants you to grow up in the place where he's put you. You see, Jesus is the vine and you're the branches. Or Jesus is the vine and you are the branches. And he wants you to bear fruit. He wants you to have lots of fruit, like where I cut this one off, this little snippet. There's like three other ones that are green that are getting ready to develop. You know, and I got some monster ones that look like they should go to the fair. I mean, they, they're, they're huge. <laughs> they're not watermelons, but boy, do they look like cantaloupes. <laughs> well, maybe not that big. But the point is, your life has got to be that way. Because if it's not, remember the fig tree? Cursed. It's worthless. And you know yourself already, based upon how much peace you have, how much love you have, and how much joy you have, whether or not your life is bearing fruit. You can still bear fruit. Everything in its season bears fruit. There's a time to plant, a time to sow, a time to reap, a time to harvest. There's a time for growth. There's a time for development. There's a time that my tomato plants just stretch out and reach as far as they can into the sun. And they grow way out of proportion. 
And then, you know, life kind of makes them kind of like pull back a little bit, you know. Some of their branches get a little like kind of shriveled up because they realize they stretched themselves out too far. But near the base and the stalk where they're supposed to be, the tomatoes bloom because first they turn into blossoms and they have this bright light, you know, like they're, oh, I got saved. Oh, I am a blossom. Oh, it's a blossom. Yay. But you see, for every blossom, not all of them bear fruit. Some of my blossoms shrivel up and die. They become just little dried up yellow thingies and fall off eventually. But some of the blossoms, you see this little green thing? That was all a blossom. You see that little stem? And then those little green thingies? That's where the stem is. See the stem? I'm a stem! I'm a stem! I'm a blossom! You get it? I hope so. Otherwise, you know, just switching tomatoes. But when that blossom is just right, it gets bigger and bigger. It smiles so much that the joy comes into its life. And then it becomes, instead of a blossom, a tomato. Whoa! And it hangs on for dear life. And just when you think it's going to fall, it hangs on until it turns fully ripe. And then God cuts it off. <gasps> he took my fruit. Well, yeah. Because you see, the Lord wants you to bear fruit, not for yourself. Because you're supposed to produce fruit. But the gardener, he wants to admire the fruit. He wants to take the fruit for what it was developed to be. For what he wants to use it for. He wants your life to bear much fruit. And if you're not bearing fruit, then you need to reconsider what you're doing. Because you may be trying to exist outside of the vine. You may be trying to be something somewhere you can't survive without being in the tomato plant. So, I don't know about you, but you know, I'd be looking around for the best kind of tomato plants I could find. I'd be looking around for drought resistant, you know, and for pesticide protected, you know, and all these different kinds of tomato plants that, you know, are just right for bearing fruit. Because you see, God is a wise gardener. He isn't just going to take all tomato plants and say, yeah, come on, wild tomato plant. You know, come on, we'll stick you in with these cultivated tomato plants that are just right, bearing much fruit. No, as a matter of fact, he's going to separate the weeds from those plants that are productive. And you may not know it, but God is going to cultivate you up to a point. And then he's going to say, where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? Come on now. Uh, it's time. Time of harvest has come. Where's the fruit? That's your point. He arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father ran, saw him and ran to him and fell on his neck and kissed him. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father, father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. You have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. You who sometimes were afar off are made near by the blood of Jesus. Now therefore you are no more strangers, you are not foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Somebody asked me recently, what can I do to go into rapture? What can I do to be close to God? What can I do to prepare myself? And, quite frankly, bear fruit. It's pretty simple. You see, it's your nature, if you're a Christian, to bear fruit. It's your calling 
and your election to bear much fruit. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that love one another as I have loved you. If you would seek to be great among the kingdom of heaven, learn to be the servant of all. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them all the things which I have commanded you. And what is his commandment? His commandments are not grievous, nor are they harmful. But my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But really, what is my yoke and easy? Yoke and burden. Jesus took a cross and made it into a exclamation point in history. It wasn't something that was really that easy. It was something that was pretty hard in one way, and pretty easy in another way. Because you see, Jesus passed through death. So, he no longer feared anything but eternal life. Because he proved that death could hold them not. It couldn't stop him from doing what God intended. And neither can death do that to you. Death has no power over you because you're going to live forever in heaven or hell. But this life may be challenging. Sometimes there may be more wind Sometimes there may be rain. Sometimes there may be storms. But you know what it does? It makes this little stem pretty tough. Matter of fact, it makes it able to hold much fruit. As a matter of fact, the circumstances of your life are designed in order to build you up, not tear you down. Because the longer you are with God, the more that you stay and bloom where you're planted and grow up into the things God wants you to be the more you'll bear fruit but when you choose not to go say to church or be a part of a fellowship or be part of some place God wants you to be with people he wants you to be with you know other branches of the same vine then can I ask you a question if you're out there kind of doing your own thing studying your own way because you don't like what you know is going on because you're a blossom and you shriveled up. Look around the vine. Look around the vine. You know, where you're at. See if there's any fruit. Then ask someone with fruit what you should do. Because if they have peace, love, and joy and you don't, I think you're missing out on something. I think you're doing the wrong thing maybe in the wrong place at the wrong time. But this is what your life is all about right here. This itself is all you need to do. This is what Jesus commanded you. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. It's a lot easier than you think when you walk in the Spirit of God. Then you can't help but bear fruit. It's automatic.